Bouquet Over a Barrel Down by the boggy bayous of Louisiana lived critters of all shapes and sizes. Some were big as bullies, and others were puny as a picayune and penny. Some were as sharp as a bee stinger, and others were duller than a wooden nickel. There were those that came into the world with a silver spoon to suck on, while others got nothing but a cypress splinter. Take on Père Bouquet, for instance. He cast a shadow big as a barnyard. He owned a farming field full of delta soil so rich that if you planted a penny at sunrise, you could pick a dollar before sundown. But as for smarts, he must have been hiding behind the barn door when they were passed out. Now compare Le Pen, on the other hand, wasn't but knee-high to a blackberry bush, and his cupboards were so bare he could stretch himself out and sleep in them. He could find more ways to get out of work than there are fleas on a possum. But Le Pen, him, he'd gotten an extra helping of smarts, and so things didn't always turn out as you might expect. One summer, Bouquet got overambitious when he planted his cotton field. There was so much plowing and planting and tending and hoeing to be done in that hot Louisiana sun that, by harvest time, he was so pooped he could barely blink an eye. As the cotton bowls started popping out around him like firecrackers on New Year's Eve, he knew he had to get himself some help. Now, Le Pen, who'd spent the whole summer lollygagging in the shade of the sassafras tree, had a way of showing up at times like these, and compare Bouquet was so desperate that, against his better judgment. He decided to ask that half-pint hare for help. Say, Le Pen, he asked, what would you take to help me harvest this cotton crop? Le Pen shaded his eyes and surveyed the cotton field that glimmered like a snowdrift all the way to the bayou. Knowing he could hoodwink Bouquet quicker than he could sneeze, he said, Woo, that's a heap of cotton. I'd have to get at least an eighth of it to make it worth my slaving in the hot sun. Buki scratched his ear. He'd never been very good at figuring. I'll give you one four, he said, being as four was littler than eight. Lapin's ears pricked up as he followed Buki's line of thinking. You drive a hard bargain, Buki, he said, but I wouldn't want to take advantage of you. I suppose I could do it for a third. Half, said Buki, thinking that half had a two in it and that was smaller than a three. Deal, said Le Pen, hiding a grin. Bien bon, said Bouquet, figuring he'd gotten the best of the bargain. Here's you a sack, and here's me a sack. Let's get to work. Now Le Pen couldn't resist playing tricks on Bouquet any more than he could turn down a piece of king cake on Mardi Gras. I can't wait to get to work, he said sweetly. But looks to me like we'll be needing something to celebrate with at the end of the harvest. What say we treat ourselves to a barrel of rum cake? Oh, all right grumbled Buki. He loved nothing more than rum, rum cake himself. Go ahead, get some butter to go with it. So Le Pen hopped off to the store and charged a nice fat barrel of sweet rum cake to Buki's account, and a nice fat barrel of butter too. He stashed them under the cool bank of the bayou so the butter wouldn't melt in the sun. Then they set to picking cotton. Buki went pick, 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 and pluck, pluck, pluck. But Le Pen went pick, pluck, pick, pluck. His sack had barely began, begun to bulge before he pricked up his elongated ears and called, Huh? What's that you say? What? said Bouquet from the next row. Dead is again. One of my sisters is calling me to a baptism. She want me to be the godfather to her baby and help name the little thing. I didn't hear nothing, said Bouquet. Of course you didn't. That's because you got such puny ears, said Le Pen. Go on, then, growled Compare Bouki. I don't suppose you can turn down an invitation to be a parent. So Le Pen dropped his sack and hightailed it out of the field. But he didn't go to any baptism. No, he circled around and headed straight for the bayou and that barrel of butter. Naturally, he had to have something to spread it on, so he cut himself a thick slice of rum cake, too. Oh, that butter was so smooth, so creamy, that cake so sweet and spicy that he just had to have another slice, and another after that. Finally, when his belly couldn't hold another bite, he decided it was time to get back to the cotton picking. Bouquet's sack was nearly full by then, but there was plenty left to pick. About time you got back, he said. What'd they name the baby? Oh, uh, they named it Comment Say, said Le Pen. Bouquet shook his shaggy head. What are folks thinking naming a baby just begun? Le Pen shrugged and got to picking. Pick, 
pluck, pick, pluck. Long about noon, Lepin's sack was still as empty as a hatched egg, and even though his belly was stuffed fuller than a squirrel's cheeks, all that cake and all that butter kept dancing through his mind. So he lifted his head and cocked his ears. Coming, he called out into thin air. Who dat? said Bouquet, shading his eyes from the sun. Lepin sighed. This time it's my little brother calling. I got to be a godfather again. Ain't they got enough of you rabbits already? Bouquet sighed. Well, go on then. And he went back to picking. Lepansky daddled over to the bayou, pulled up the barrels, and had himself a little noontime snack. Well, it was bigger than little. In fact, it was downright humongous. When he trudged on back to the field, Bouquet was sweating over his second sack of cotton. What they named the baby this time? He grumbled halfway. How did you guess? said Lepin. Moitié it is. Compère Bouquet just shook his head and said, What next? Compère Lepin went back to picking cotton, working slower than a slug on Sunday. The sun had warmed things up something fierce by the time three o'clock rolled around, and sure enough, Lepin perked up his ears again and called out, I'll be there shortly. Not another baptism, snapped Compère Bouquet. If you can't hear them calling me, you ought to get your ears checked. Bouquet surveyed all the cotton they had left to pick, but by then, he was too tired to argue, so he waved Lepin on off. This time, Compère Lepin scraped the bottom of the butter barrel with the last crumbs of the rum cake. His belly was so full, he could barely waddle on back to the cotton field. They named it Tufini, Lepin told Bouquet with a glint in his eye. All done, because I ain't going to be parenting no more babies. Come quitting time, Compère Bouquet dragged sack after sack out of the field, while Lepin had a few measly clumps of cotton floating in the bottom of his. Of his. Bouquet limped toward the bayou, his mouth watering. The only thing that kept me going all day, he groaned, was the thought of all that sweet rum cake and all that cool, creamy butter. But when he hoisted the barrels up from the bank of that bayou, they were emptier than the church basket come the day after Christmas. Bouquet swung a suspicious look at Lepin and pulled himself up till he towered over him. Why, you little scoundrel! What? said Lepin, acting innocent as a newborn baby. Wait till I get my hands on that puny little neck of yours. But just then, Bouquet's mouth opened in a barrel-sized yawn, and his eyelids clamped shut and he fell into a standing up, tuckered out sleep. All that rich food and hard labor had made Lepin drowsy too, so putting a little distance between himself and Bouquet, he lay down and dozed off as well. But the late afternoon sun blazed down on Lepin's overstuffed belly, and all that butter inside of it began to melt. He woke up in an oily puddle big as the Gulf of Mexico. Uh-oh, said Lepin, scampering off to the bayou to clean himself up. Then, when he saw Bouquet still asleep in his tracks, a trick popped into Lepin's head like a popcorn kernel in a frying pan. He commenced to pushing and shoving on Bouquet's broad backside till Bouquet fell right smack dollop into that puddle of butter. Then Lepin smeared that oily mess all over Bouquet's mouth and paws till he was greasier than a politician's palm. Shaking him awake, Lepin cried, Why, Bouquet, just look at you! You're the one that ate the butter while I was off at the baptisms! Bouquet blinked and licked his lips. Ah, I, I didn't do it, I swear, Lepin. A likely story, said Lepin. Here you sit in a whole puddle of evidence. I surely don't recollect it, said Bouquet, unless Sunstroke put me out of my head. Huh, said Lepin. A deal's a deal, <clears throat> and you owe me half a barrel of butter and half a barrel of rum cake, too. Compare, compare Bouquet couldn't do nothing but scratch his greasy old head. So that's how that rascal Lepin got to have his butter and his rum cake, not once, but twice, not to mention one half of Bouquet's cotton crop. It just goes to show there's more than one way to crop a cotton field, especially for a picayunish prankster like Compare Lepin.